Hello everyone, today we are going to talk about impact testing. So there are two tests associated with impact testing. The Sharpie test that we are going to use in this lab, it is mainly used for metals and then the ISO test which is used for plastic. They are very similar, they have differences in terms of the dimensions of the specimen or uh, the equipment that we use, but I've seen these two tests have been used interchangeably for different materials. ASDM E23 lists the procedure that you need to follow to perform impact testing and it also gives information on the dimension of our specimen. We are going to use a Sharpie specimen. The specimen that is used for ISO testing is very similar as well. So we have a notch on one side and then we are going to apply load on this side uh, to fracture our specimen into two pieces. So the test procedure is that we are using a pendulum with a mass M and then release it at height H, let's call it H1. And then by the time it gets here, it gets a velocity. So here, uh, let's call this condition one. In condition one, the energy that we have is all potential, MGH1. Condition two, before contact, all we have is kinetic energy. And according to, if we assume conservation of energy, we can find a velocity before contact. And after contact, this energy, half of that will be uh, spent on impact and the other will change to potential energy. So some of that energy is spent fracturing this specimen and the other is raising the pendulum with H2. So if we have the two height, that gives us the impact energy that is spent in this procedure. Um, you don't need to measure the height. The, the Sharpie specimen, the Sharpie testing has, uh, uh, is either digital or there is an arrow that tells you the impact energy after the test. So we usually read the value uh, here to get the impact energy for different specimens. Uh, in this lab, in addition to getting this, the impact energy, we want to get it for our specimen at different temperatures. As low as negative 320 that we get by immersing our samples in liquid nitrogen. Negative 110 for dry ice. 32 the ice bath. 70 degrees room temperature and 200 and 400 by putting our sample in the furnace. The material that we are going to use is aluminum and hot rolled steel. And for each scenario, for each material at each temperature, we are going to perform four tests. So we can do some statistical analysis this time because we have more than one data point for each scenario. Then we can plot the impact energy as function of the temperature. Remember, we have two materials, so you can plot both of them uh, on the same uh, figure. And for each test, we have uh, four data points. So for 320, we can plot the average value. And because we have different data points, we can plot the error bar as well. So this error bar can represent different things. It can represent, you can uh, assign it as mean and max data point, or you could say that this error bar is the standard deviation. Or when we are plotting it, we can say that that's, let's say 95% confidence interval. So we have multiple option on how we are gonna present uh, the data. Or you could plot all the data points. Let's say you have four data points, you could plot all of them. 
but usually a standard deviation and confidence interval is, is the common way to report uh, our result. Both Excel and MATLAB have a function to plot error bar. So we are going to plot our data as a function of the temperature. And then we are, of course, we are connecting the average values. And we are hoping to see a trend. One objective of this lab is to find the ductile brittle transition. And we can get that transition by looking at the impact energy to see if there is a significant change in impact energy moving from one temperature to another. Materials, both aluminum and steel, we know they are ductile in room temperature or in higher temperature. But when we are decreasing the temperature, they might go through brittle transition. And we are going to find that by looking at the impact energy. And if the impact energy is low at the beginning, and then it goes up and it stays there, then this region would be our transition region. And the temperature that is associated with that would be the brittle ductile uh, transition temperature. We already know that aluminum does not show any ductile brittle transition. And that has to do with the crystal structure of aluminum. Aluminum is FCC, face centered cube. So we have half of atom on each face on the other side. And then this is uh, for the bottom, the top and that. And steel is a body centered cube. So steel does not have, or this structure in general, uh, has a brittle ductile transition. And FCC does not have brittle ductile transition. This is our expectation. But when we do the test, depending on how good our data is, we might or might not get the same uh, conclusion. But this is an important finding. We know that brittle and ductile material behave very differently. Their failure mechanism is different. The failure surface looks different. The failure criterion that we use for each case is different. So it's very important that if we observe that the material like steel would turn into a brittle material at some temperature. And the objective of this lab is to find that temperature. And uh, by looking at the impact energy. Because we get multiple data points, so we can do some statistical analysis. I have posted a separate video on how to find the difference between the two means. Uh, but here, I just briefly uh, gonna mention that for each case between the two temperatures, you're gonna get the average value for the first, the data points for the first temperature, for the second temperature, and then you wanna find the population means. And it gives you the equation, will give you a range of value because of this plus minus sign. And if that range includes zero, that means that there is no statistical difference if it doesn't include zero, that means that there is a statistical difference. So I'm expecting a similar table in your lab report detailing whether your result shows any statistical difference or not. Because looking at the graph, we can just simply visually inspect to see whether uh, we have any statistical difference moving from this temperature to the other temperature. We need to some do some uh, statistical analysis and difference of the two mean is the uh, right of statistical analysis to find whether the difference between the two set of data points is significant enough that we could tell something is happening moving from one temperature to another.